Well, my name is Tony Karl and I recently started my PhD at UCL's Institute for Sustainable Resources. Uh, but today I talk about uh, what I did before my PhD when I was working at the Water for Food Institute at the University of Nebraska on the topic of water productivity. So I want to start with these two numbers. Um, by 2050, estimations show that the population will increase by 40%, which will um, result in a double of demand for food and feed. And the second number, we already heard in the presentation before, 70% of all the fresh water is already used by agriculture today. So these two numbers show, show how important it is to include agriculture in the discussion of uh, sustainable water resources. And this relation is also expressed in the water productivity coefficient, which is a, a coefficient expressing the amount or the value of a crop per amount of water used to produce this crop. Um, so this coefficient is often used to um, evaluate the sustainability of water use. Um, what I also did in Nebraska. Um, just a little overview of Nebraska. It is the third largest corn producer in the USA. You can see it in, in the map of the USA in the red area. Um, it has the biggest irrigated area in the USA and the water for irrigation is mainly, mainly comes from, from groundwater. Um, so the um, groundwater comes from the High Plains Aquifer, which you can see on this map. It is one of the biggest aquifers in the world. It stretches uh, from Nebraska all the way down to Texas. And you can see in this orange and red areas, uh, those are um, areas where the groundwater declined substantially uh, with the beginning of intensive irrigation in the 1950s. So in some areas, groundwater even dropped by up to 50 meters, uh, which didn't make it feasible to irrigate anymore, so farmers um, couldn't continue with agriculture, which happened, for example, in some location in Kansas or in Texas. <coughs> and you can also see that most of the area uh, from, of Nebraska is in the area of this aquifer. So, um, this aquifer is very important for the sustainability of agriculture in Nebraska. Um, here's a closer look of the study area of my research project. Um, you can see those yellow points. Those are more than 100 fields where irrigated corn is produced. And we collected data about um, annual um, corn yields and annual water use uh, between 2005 and 2013 uh, in, in those fields. And you can also see that uh, most all of the fields are in, in areas which are either marked green or red. And those are areas where the nitrate contamination in, in groundwater is, is very high, so we also have a bad water quality in this area. Therefore, we also collected data about uh, fertilizer use, about how much fertilizer farmers use in this area. So those are the main research objectives of my project. Um, first of all, we wanted to evaluate the water productivity in the study area. Then, of course, we also looked at factors which influence water productivity. And we um, try to extend the analysis to, to interactions between the yields and water use and the whole ecological system because we don't only want to look at water quantity but also water quality issues in this area. The main tools uh, we used to, to reach those object objectives uh, were crop models which were developed and calibrated in Nebraska. And with these crop models, we could calculate the maximum amount of, of yields which can be achieved each year, and also the optimum amount of water to achieve those yields, and the optimum amount of fertilizers to achieve those yields. 
and this results, simulation results, was then compared with the actual data from the farmers. So here we can see one of the main results. The red symbols show the corn yields in tons per hectare per amount of water used at each location between 2005 and 2013. And the blue symbols show um, the yields per amount of water at the same location and the um, same years simulated both under irrigated conditions and non-irrigated conditions. So the first thing you can see is that in the simulation results, with more water supply, the yields increase. So there's a linear relationship between the yields and water supply. And we use this linear regression as a benchmark for an optimum water productivity that can be achieved in the study area under ideal um, water, nutrient, and pest management. And what you can see when you compare simulations and observed data that uh, most of the um, data from the farmers are on the right side of the benchmark. So in the majority of cases, more water is, uh, was added to the fields than needed for achieving the optimum corn yields under ideal conditions. So here on the first graph, um, we can see the average simulated and observed irrigation between 2005 and 2013. Um, we can see that every year the observed irrigation is ab above the optimum um, simulated irrigation amount. And what we can also see is a peak in 2012. So in 2012 there was a severe drought in Nebraska, so more irrigation was necessary. And on the second graph, we can see a simulated water stress from May to August in 2012 compared to water stress in 2008. So water stress, the more uh, water stress a crop has, the lower the yields are. And the purpose of irrigation is to eliminate water stress. So when there's enough water available at the location, uh, water stress would be zero during the whole season. Um, so what we can see is that in a dry year, 2012, we need more water to, to irrigate, to eliminate water stress, than in a wet year in 2008. What we can also see is that there are different periods where the crops, crop is more vulnerable to water stress and other periods where the crop is not vulnerable to water stress. So this is something uh, farmers need to consider in, in their water management. Um, so, but the interesting thing here is that in the year 2012, the dry year, the yields and water productivity was among the highest of all years. years. It was much higher than in 2008. And that's because farmers um, uh, used they used a lot of irrigation water, they used more irrigation water than rain water was, was used for, for the crops. So they had more control over the amount and the timing of water management. And this, this is something very important to, to improve water productivity. In 2008 farmers didn't need to irrigate that much. There was a lot of rain, but when water uh, arrives at the field at the wrong timing or in the wrong amount, it can be even bad for the crops, it can wash away nutrients. Um, so this control over water management is very important for the efficiency of water use. Um, what we can also see is that when we compare water productivity, water use efficiency, we also need to look at the, the context, at the story behind what has happened in, in this year. We need to look at the, the weather conditions, for example. Um, we also need to look at other farmers' managements, like, like the fertilizer use. Um, I won't discuss the results of, fer of our fertilizer uh, comparison uh, because of uh, time reasons. Um, but similar to water use, also the fertilizer use was above the optimum in most cases. Um, and that is something that needs to be considered because fertilizer has a direct in, in, uh, impact on yields and thus also on the efficiency of, of water use. 
So the main conclusions are that water productivity can be improved in the study area. And improving the quantification of crop water demand helps to in increase the efficiency of water use. And strategy towards su sustainability of water resources should combine uh, quantity and quality issues and look at the whole system. Because um, it doesn't help, help if we improve water productivity with more fertilizers, um, because that would come at the expense of water quality. <coughs> And that doesn't help the agriculture on the long term. So we always need to look at the big picture, at the whole system. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tony. That's been a fascinating piece of research. Thank you. Well, it tells a lot about what the people in Nebraska <coughs> at the end of the day. But certainly there are also lessons to be learned for our issue of uh, water scarcity and the productivity by which we can use that resource and how to do it. Uh, so thanks a lot. Um, my feeling is there might be a couple of questions. What I would like to do is to allow flexibility. I see people have a burning need. But nevertheless, after two or three questions, I would like to uh, stop the discussion right now, keep the question for the remainder of the session, so that the other presenters have also uh, well, uh, lots of time to present, and we may have a chance to have a combined discussion about all presentation at the end. So I'll keep the two, and then I'll uh, stop it here, and then we'll have a uh, discussion at the end of the session. So it would be you, and then the guy over here, then, and the second question. Andrew Ross from Global Garden. Could you comment on the pricing of water in Nebraska? and whether that pricing affected the supply or the demand. And what percentage is the pricing of water in the price of the corn that's delivered? Um, the main, I would say that the, the, the main impact on the pricing is the, are the pumping costs for, for irrigation in, in this area. Um, of course, the, the farmers try to, to uh, limit irrigation because they have to pay for, for this irrigation. Um, the price of irrigation per season are around several thousand dollars. Um, but when you compare it to the price or the money they get for their yields, um, it isn't that much because the, the, the fields they have huge, huge dimensions they get tens of thousands for, for their yields, for their corn. Um, so for farmers, it is more important not to risk their yields rather than save money on irrigation. On... Sorry, did I misunderstand you, your question? Does the price vary? Just the pumping cost. Just the pumping cost. For, for water? Okay. Yeah. Just the public yeah, I'm sure the issue of pricing will be with us for quite some time during this symposium, looking at the next session. Thank you, Dean. Is there any information? Is there any information about different farming methods, like uh, uh, the organic farming system that puts organic material into the ground and retains more water? Is there any information about so the value? of this uh, method of farming compared with industrial fertilizers? Um, in Nebraska, I, I didn't look at the different um, soil management styles of the farmers. Yeah. Um, but of course, there are different strategies to um, save water in the soil to, uh, or to, 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 to reduce evaporation of, yeah, of, yeah. of water, yes. There are, there are strategies also in, 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 in the uh, conservation of the soil, which improves water productivity. Okay. Yes. Okay.